Welcome back. Abnormal curvature in the spine is known as scoliosis and what you're seeing now is the spine of a person who has scoliosis. The spine curves sometimes in an S shape or sometimes in a C shape sideways. Now if left untreated, this condition can lead to other health problems. Scoliosis hits 2 to 3 percent of all ad adolescents and to girls more than boys. Now, the typical way many doctors uh, treat scoliosis is to wait and see how, you know, how badly the spine curves and it's bad enough, give them a brace or perhaps surgery in the future. But our next guest disagrees. He has an alternative way to treat scoliosis and he's documented it in his new book, Health in Your Hands. That's right. So let's say good morning to its author, Dr. Kevin Lau, chiropractor and nutritionist, and Isla and Blair, a scoliosis patient. Good morning and thanks for joining good us. Good morning. So let's start with the very yeah. basics. How does someone know that they've got scoliosis? The easiest way to determine whether or not someone's got scoliosis is merely just getting the person to bend forward. This is normally called an Adams test and what we're looking for is any unevenness in the back or what we call a rib hump. From here we normally go through a definitive diagnosis where we take an x-ray. Okay, so if left untreated, how bad can it get? Okay, let's say a severe scoliosis, like a curvature that's over 70 degrees. It normally involves a severe twisting of the spine. That tends to compromise a lot of the hearts and lungs. It might lead to a poor circulation as, as well as less of oxygen. Okay, so there are different extremes, but not everyone will result in the most extreme case. You Certainly agree? not. Okay. Let's talk about your experience, Isla. You had scoliosis. Um, and how long ago was that actually? You still have it now and have you... Um, I got diagnosed with scoliosis two years ago. Right. And uh, it's quite a mild case compared right. to some of the other patients. Okay. And just under a year of treatment with Dr. Kevin, it's so mild now that I wouldn't be considered mm -hmm. a scoliosis patient any longer. Can it ever, um, I don't know, be cured? Or it, it just improve, uh, you can't improve it, can you? You just prevent it from getting worse. Is that how it works? We can reduce it to an extent. I mean, total correction is probably not realistic, but right. we can certainly prevent and also reduce it. Right, okay. Uh, Isla, when you first discovered your scoliosis, uh, what, you went to see an orthopedic surgeon, I believe? Or, um, uh, I went and saw a neurospine surgeon. Okay. And he recommended I do about six months' worth of one-to-one -one aquaphysio. Mm -hmm. I went for a month. But then I pulled out because the pain wasn't easing and it was really expensive. Give us some idea. I mean, when you say the pain was really bad, you couldn't turn, you couldn't, couldn't bend? Couldn't turn, couldn't bend over. I got to the point where I was taking codeine painkillers right. just to get to sleep at night. Wow. Okay. What was the degree of curvature in your spine then? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it was quite mild. Okay. Yeah. And, and Dr. Lau, so when you met Isla, I mean, how bad was her spine at that point? It was about 15 degrees, which okay. isn't a severe case but she was doing a lot of excessive running and, and sports that was aggravating her condition. Okay, so explain to us um, what your, yeah. your belief is and why you think perhaps braces and surgery is not the best option. Okay, well, when you look at bracing and surgery, it's really working on the symptom of de the deformity rather than the disease of scoliosis. With, as a natural orientated practitioner, my main goal is really just to improve the health of the person mm -hmm. rather than just correcting the spine. So we do work on trying to correct the spine but we do so by promoting their health and also looking at what sort of factors is not, prov not uh, causing them to, to grow properly. So we might go into dietary factors or even lifestyle changes. Let's talk a bit about the dietary factors. Um, let's, yeah, tell us how diet can be um, uh, tweaked to, to suit scoliosis patients to improve their condition. Okay, well the m biggest misconception when it comes to diet is one diet fits all. Yeah. Um, in the book I actually detailed the interesting research by Dr. Weston Price. Now Dr. Weston Price actually studied a lot of tribes around the world, a lot of primitive tribes that actually ate a very holistic or whole food sort of diet and they were quite resilient when it comes to degenerative diseases such as diabetes, cancers and, and even scoliosis. But when they started to switch over to a more modern based diet with pr more processed food, they started to get a lot more of these modern diseases that we have mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. An is interesting thing is that he didn't find one single diet that was correct for everyone. In fact, he went to the, the Eskimos and right. they ate primarily meats and fats and they had had a very low risk of heart disease and cancers. So maybe I can ask you then, so what then are you prescribing for this day and age? What are you saying people should eat if they're in this condition? 
Um, for this condition, I think people need to go back to eating what they're genetically predetermined to eat. And that's what metabolic typing is for. Okay. It, you go through and understand what sort of foods help to push your system back into balance, what sort of foods help to push it out of out of balance. I have to ask you, what are those foods? What do, what do you mean by going back to, you know, what we're okay. genetically... So, so in, in three basic methods, there's, um, there's pretty much a protein type person, there's a carbo type person, which is close to a vegetarian based person, and there's a mixture. So during the process, people go through and uh, listen into their body to determine what sort of foods and how much proportions of certain foods they need to eat. Okay, let me, let me break, we still need, it's a bit hard for someone like us, like me maybe to understand, okay. but for Isla for example, what did you prescribe for her condition? What did you okay. ask her to eat? For Isla, she was more of a protein type person, mm -hmm. so I ate, I prescribed some more uh, protein um, in the sense that at least 40 to 50 percent of her plate was protein based. She ate some vegetables, but also reduced a lot of the simple sugars and carbohydrates. How okay. long did you have to stick to that diet for? And are you still sticking mm. to that now? Oh, completely. I love it. For the first two weeks, it was a bit sluggish because I was originally eating like a vegetarian. Right. So it was a bit heavy for me. But after a month, I managed to sleep completely through the night. My energy levels just went up amazingly. Yeah. It made a huge difference. Are you also doing some exercises? Did you also prescribe some forms of exercises to help? There are exercises and the exercises are broken up into four different parts. There are stretches which help with ligaments. There are core stability work which helps with how the, the muscles that stabilise the spine. There's also some postural re retraining, teaching a person how to sit, stand and also mm -hmm. sleep properly so then it places the least amount of pressure. But exercising alone is not the only thing. I also do recommend a uh, orthopedic device which was de developed by orthopedic doctors in Europe it, which right. is called a verti track and this actually puts in a three-dimensional sort of traction into through the spine to decompress it is that anything like a brace it is not like a brace in the sense that you need to wear it the whole day but um, you wear it for about 20 minutes per day or two to three times a week okay but then earlier you were saying that basically you don't do is it your opinion that a brace doesn't work Okay, that's different from a brace. I okay. mean, this birdie track isn't a brace as such. But it sounds similar to some extent, that you're doing the same kind of uh, stretching, traction, trying to hold the back in place. So, I, I mean, I'm just trying to clarify in terms yeah, of... Yeah, it's a little different in, in its uh, mechanism, okay. how it works. Okay, but so you're saying that a brace, you don't need a brace, basically? Um, when it comes to bracing, I, I always let the patients decide whether or not mm -hmm. they want a brace. Okay. Um, in terms of research, Research shows that the evidence for bracing is still quite weak, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the latest issue of the Cochrane Library actually demonstrated that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, your method that you're proposing is a definite alternative rather than complementary to mm. surgery or... Oh, no, it is definitely complementary. Whether or not someone wants to go through a uh, method that re involves bracing or even surgery, they can still implement changes such as an improved diet or even lifestyle changes such as exercise. Okay, so it's rather complementary to... I guess, well, I mean, an improved diet would be good in general for yeah. all of our, uh, you know, yeah. our well-being. Uh, Isla, what about yourself? What did you, what options did you go through before you considered uh, taking this step? I mean, before you had seen Dr. Lau, what did you, um, what had I you... I did yoga, mm -hmm. I did Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. I did the aquaphysio, and then I lastly resorted to a okay. whole lot of painkillers. <laughs> so you kind of exhausted all the options. Uh, and so now, I mean, how, you mentioned how many months, sorry, how many months have you, uh, or how many, you've been doing this? I saw Kevin before? for just under a year. Just under a year. Yep. How fast can a person expect recovery? Okay, it really depends on how severe the curvature is. Okay. And also how um, long they've had it. Um, it's not to say that this sort of correction or this sort of care is actually right for everyone. Mm. Some people actually need to go through and do the surgical route and for those sort of cases you need to really talk, discuss it with your healthcare pr practitioner. Okay. What about managing pain? I mean brace and surgery are obviously more painful than your method. Mm. So would you recommend it for, I don't know, reducing pain specifically? Oh definitely. Even a device like the VertiTrack is actually good for slip discs, uh, sciatica, leg pain down the legs and, and things like that. Okay. So for those who are a little bit unsure which, which way to go, because I guess there are three mm -hmm. um, options, particularly for adolescents where they're, they're still growing, <coughs> yes. I guess, and developing. So they, they can wait and see, or they yes. can go for the brace option, or they can go for surgery, 
or they could possibly take on your option, what would you recommend? How would, you, how would they assess what option to take? I think as, um, as patients or even parents, they need to really get informed with their own condition. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much why I brought out the book. The book doesn't really delve into bracing and surgery as much, mm -hmm. but rather the other side of the story. So as, as most people with a condition, I hope they get more informed and make their own decisions and understand that changing your diet and changing your lifestyle and implementing exercise should be an in integral part of anyone's sort of uh, life, regardless if it's spinal health or even health in general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exercise, good diet, it's, uh, yeah, they say, well, they had that saying about an apple a day keeps the doctor away, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, then it became an aspirin a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> Okay, well, well, thank you for coming in, and uh, glad to hear you're doing better, also. Right. And uh, we've just been speaking to Dr. Kevin Lau, author of a new book on scoliosis, and Isla Ann Bly, a scoliosis patient. And if you're interested in Dr. Lau's ideas on scoliosis, uh, yeah, well... there's the book here, <laughs> Health in Your Hands. You can get a copy, it's available major at bookstores. all major bookstores. Just a word of caution, if you think you have scoliosis, it's always good uh, to find out more about the condition before you plunge headlong into any program. So speak to your doctors, speak to the relevant professionals to, to clarify the issue. And uh, of course, awareness and education is the best tool to have. That's right. Well, we're going for a short break mm -hmm. now. This is Primetime Morning. Stay tuned. We'll see you in just a bit.